Hi, welcome to this presentation. We will be discussing how modeling impact enhances collaboration throughout the model development and its simulation. To illustrate that, we will use the example of an aircraft hydraulic actuator. My name is Clément Coic and I work at Modelon. I will be talking in the name of my co-authors Anand Emans and both Johan Okeson and Andreasson. While five authors are listed on this paper, I would like to emphasize that this presentation relies on the work of all my colleagues, as Model and Impact is indeed the junction of all our products into a single one. As this presentation focuses on the collaborative development of an aircraft hydraulic actuator model, we will first present the needs for such collaborative development and highlight how Model and Impact meets the associated requirements. Then, we will present the aircraft actuator under study and detail how we use models to size its parameters. A more realistic engineering workflow is then described and automated with the help of a web application. We will then enhance our sized model with a mode valve that enables simulating faults. The model is then exported on a real-time target and simulated in hard real-time. Finally, we will conclude this presentation by summarizing the achievements. Let's now discuss the needs of a collaborative development. Typical development cycles include several steps that are usually implemented by different persons and using different software. In addition, models are provided by externals, for example suppliers, and some are also sent to model consumers, for example a different department in the company. This means that an efficient model development relies on several persons, several fidelities of models, and several tools, which clearly highlight the need for collaborative development. The needs of collaborative developments are indeed perfectly matching Modelon's mantra, system simulation without boundaries. Modelon enhances customer developments. We do not limit it. To achieve that, we extensively rely on standards and open source technologies such as Modelica and FMI, but also more widely like Python, Jupyter Notebook, or REST API. We grow with a customer-centric mindset, adapting our products to our customer needs so they can use it as a solid base, but without being bounded by it. User can build on top of this base and interface with other softwares and technologies. That is what has driven us to build a state-of-the-art Modelica compiler an extensive set of domain and industry libraries, and a set of FMI-based tools to support model deployment. Our libraries are compliant with the Modelica specification, which makes them available in several tools, such as ANSYS Twin Builder, Dasso System Daimola, or ESI Simulation X. Our compiler, Optimica Compiler Toolkit, compiles Modelica code into FMUs, and is thus ensuring that a compiled model can be shared based on a standard. Modelon also provides the compiler to several software such as ANSYS Twin Builder or Siemens Incenter AMSIM. These technologies are all integrated within Modelon Impact and extended with custom workflows, Jupyter Notebook, and web applications. Modelon Impact enhances collaboration by adding new ways of working using workspaces that contain models, views, results, and so on, that are shared via a single URL. We will now illustrate that with the example of a hydraulic actuator development. We selected an Airbus A320-like Elron actuator for this paper. The Elron control surface is the main contributor to the roll control of the aircraft. Each Elron is controlled by two actuators, fed by oil from different hydraulic circuits for safety reasons. Only one is active at a time, the other is following, providing some damping. This is referred as a standby mode. This way, in case of failure, the failing actuator can be passivated and the other one takes control of the surface. The switch between active and standby modes is achieved by action on the mode valve. This is the scope of this presentation. Isolation components are neglected as we will not investigate scenarios involving these, such as ramp up pressure at startup. Let's now illustrate 
how we can size such an actuator with the help of Modelica models. The first step in building the model is to drag and drop components and connect them together. We rely on libraries that are built in Modelon Impact, such as Modelon Hydraulics, the Modelon Base Library, and the Modelica Standard Library. When building models knowing all parameters, it is good practice to build smaller subsystems, verify their behaviors, and assemble them in a second step. Here, the aim is to size part of the system. It makes more sense to assemble the system first with the relevant fidelity. From literature, we extracted a relevant performance requirement for such an Elrond actuator. We can now add all known parameters and boundary conditions to the system. Followed by idealized behavior when missing information, based on modular judgment. For example, the check valve pressure losses are here neglected. But there is still missing information though in our model. Therefore, we shall now size the cylinder and valve sections as well as define the controller gain. The next slide presents the step-by-step -step process to find these parameter values. The cylinder sections shall be sized based on the stall load in extension and retraction. The stall load is the maximum force the cylinder is able to generate with the system pressure available. In this characteristic point, no oil flows through the valve. Note that these are equal, meaning that the cylinder will be symmetrical. By setting this experiment, we can define the cylinder sections. Good. Our next step is to define the valve areas. This is achieved thanks to the no load speed requirement. This is the maximum speed the actuator can reach while facing no load with the valve fully open. We set this second experiment and we are done finding the correct values for the valve areas. We can now compute the controller gain based on the equivalent first order response of the actuator. This completes our design. We have successfully sized our actuator based on requirements by sequentially changing the boundary conditions and component fidelity level. Each sizing is done automatically by solving the initial equation system. But are we really done? Not really. This is a nice first step, but we started from a synthesized requirement table. Engineers usually start from a huge set of performance points and defining the design point is not necessarily trivial. Therefore, iterations are part of the workflow. We will now present the actuator web app that automates a more realistic engineering workflow. In Model on Impact, the actuator design web application is available at the model level by hovering the simulate button. After clicking on the web app button, a dedicated browser tab opens. This web application consists mainly in two parts. The first focuses on the actuator sizing, while the second part performs a linear analysis of our size model. The actuator sizing is performed based on a mission profile that consists of speed versus load points. By clicking on the fit button, the main sizing points are highlighted. The sizing will only consider this reduced set of points, which make it faster. We can then specify the boundary conditions of our system, such as system pressures and oil density. In the context of aircraft systems, optimizing a system usually means minimizing its mass while meeting all requirements. As a cylinder mass increases with its area, the optimization here minimizes the cylinder area while keeping the maximum speed within specified bounds. This maximum speed value usually comes from safety requirements, typically to avoid ceiling wear or excessive kinetic energy in case of failure. When clicking on the optimize button, the minimum area meeting the constraints is found and the associated speed versus load characteristic is added on top of our mission profile. The values of the optimized areas are also displayed below. We can then change for a lower value of the maximum safety speed 
to reach a different optimum design. Finally, the controller gain is computed and optimized parameters are stored in the model. The bot plot automatically generated from the model helps verifying the correct behavior. Now we have a correctly sized actuator, we can add a mod valve. This allows studying some fault scenario and observing the actuator reconfiguration response. Now we have sized the actuator based on a realistic engineering workflow. We can add the mod valve based on a customizable valve component available in Model on Hydraulics and simulate failure scenarios. In the presented curve, a single actuator is following a sign command facing a sign antagonist air load. At time 0.5 seconds, the failure happens and the actuator is reconfigured to the damping mode. We observe that the actuator is slightly driven by the load. Additionally, I would like to highlight that the figure in the screenshot is taken from Daimola, which was done on purpose to remind that in a collaborative development, we should be able to execute a model in several environments. We will now present how our model meets the hard real-time simulation constraints with a concrete example. In the verification phase of a development, the engineers might want to couple the model with a more detailed controller, functioning in real-time. Here, the model is exported as an FMU and integrated into Simulink where the controller is built. We actually didn't need a more complex controller to illustrate our experiment, so the same is used. The system is then built on a speed goat target and simulated in real time. This concludes our presentation in which we have discussed a realistic engineering workflow for model-based development. A collaborative development involves several users and most likely several tools. Model and Impact successfully support this collaborative aspect by sharing workspace and spreading the model simulation to a larger audience, as well as enabling web app to support engineering workflows. Model on Hydraulics proved to be available in several simulation environments and proved to be real-time capable, once exported with Model on FMI tools on a real-time target. I would like to thank you for your time and remain available for any question.